In the video on the basics of differential expression between groups, we took a look at a module that you can find in Box 3, called Differential Expression Between Groups. This module finds all genes that exhibit differential expression between groups of samples in a dataset. We talked about the settings that can be left as default most of the time, but that you can adapt based on your type of data and research question. In this video, we show a few more settings that you can choose, and also we show further analyses that you can do with the list of genes that you obtain as a result in this module. First of all, let's select the track that is always required in this module. Uh, and last time we chose MIC and AMP, so we do that again. Um, then to read more on the tests that are available in the statistics box, you can go to our online tutorial where the different uh, statistical tests are explained in more detail. One of the more advanced options that uh, R2 provides in this module is the gene filters. And that's available in many of R2's analyses and also in this module. Uh, so let's take a look how it works. Here you can see the button uh, select a gene set. And when you open up, uh, you can see that you can select either the chromosome. So you can uh, choose genes that are located on chromosome 1, for instance, or chromosome 5. Um, or you can use the gene ontology database, which has a very easy search function. And you can search for um, yeah, either a disease or uh, any kind of term that you are familiar with in your research and uh, that might be related to a specific gene set that is relevant. Um, or other options are gene sets that are uh, available in R2. So you have a, a user gene annotation, for instance. Here you can find um, gene sets that have been stored in your account. And uh, in order to use this, you have to click a few times on the same button uh, to every time select a deeper layer of the gene set selection. In our case, we just want to uh, use all the genes. So we don't select any gene set. And we just simply click on hide gene set selection again. So to summarize, you can use the gene filters uh, as you can in uh, many analyses in R2 uh, to perform the analysis on a specific subset of genes, for instance, to find differential expression in genes known to be transcription factors or to find differentially expressed genes that are known drug targets. Uh, you can specify a chromosome as well or a gene set that is uh, related to a certain disease or a cellular process. F combinations are possible as well. So this enables you, for example, to find the developmental genes on chromosome 7. Of course, that's just an example of what you could do with the gene set. Um, I leave this for now. We just click next with the default settings and the MIC N amplification track uh, selected as uh, the criteria for the division of the groups. And we click next um, and we click next again because both groups we want to maintain in our selection. And here you see the same results as in the basic video on differential expression between groups. The first step that many people want to take is to plot their results. So in the right menu, we can click on plot all genes. Uh, and the resulting plot shows all genes of the list in an XY plot. It can take a while before the plot is fully loaded. Hovering over the points shows the gene symbol of the data point. And you can see that MCN or over here, twist1, these genes, they are highly higher expressed in the um, make an amplified group than in a non-amplified group. If you don't see any hovering information, it might be that uh, your data set contains more than 5,000 samples. In that case, to speed up the graph generation, this information is not automatically loaded. You can then click on a link that is always displayed under the graph, uh, with which you can switch on the hovering information. Clicking on the data point in the plot opens up a new window showing the expression of the gene in the two groups as a box plot, which then can further be adapted by the settings underneath here to color it, for instance, by track. R2 allows further annotation of the XY plot of all genes. You can scroll down and adapt the settings. You can, for instance, mark a gene uh, let's say AKR1C1 uh, by simply putting it in here. 
always redraw the image to see the effect. As you can see, AKR1C1 is now marked by a red color in our plot. Again, the plot um, takes a while to load, so you could also adapt several different settings. You could, for instance, emphasize a gene list. If you go in here, you can here choose either uh, genes on a chromosome, you can uh, search in the gene ontology, or for instance, you can find gene sets over here, uh, your own gene sets under user gene anot, or you can um, go, for instance, to the CAG uh, database and search in there or go deeper and deeper into the hierarchical structure. And uh, for instance, I'm just making an example here, look for the DNA replication gene set. We could also say that we want to get a vector output over here and we want to uh, draw fault lines over here. Then we redraw the image and all these settings take effect. We can see that after reloading the image that um, the different settings have taken effect. We can see here a link to a vector image that is uh, for exporting for a manuscript, for instance, in high resolution. Of course, you can also simply cl right click for lower resolution and copy the image or save image to the computer. Uh, furthermore, we see the fold chains. Uh, here we see the fold one and here fold two. And we can also see the um, requested DNA replication pathway highlighted in red. You can show the same kind of information in an MA plot or a Vulcano plot. And every time you will have to click redraw the image. One more thing, um, the marking of the genes doesn't necessarily have to be just in red. There's a kind of notation in R2 that you can look up in the tutorial and that I just copy paste right now right here to give different colors to different genes and um, have different kind of marking types. As you can see here, we now marked uh, several genes in different ways. This is enough for now on uh, the plotting of the genes, so I will close the tab. After the analysis for differential expression between groups, we could wonder if there are any biological processes or themes associated to our list of genes. This could show us which biological processes might be involved in the difference between the sample groups. To look for functional annotations that are overrepresented in our gene list, we make use of the gene ontology analysis. You'll find the button over here. I quote from the gene ontology website. The gene ontology knowledge base is the world's largest source of information on the functions of genes. And you can look them up at geneontology.org. The gene ontology knowledge base contains sets of genes that are annotated with the processes, locations and functions in biology that they are involved in. So let's click on the button uh, to have a look what I'm talking about. So again, the gene ontology analysis is a gene set overrepresentation analysis that identifies the gene sets uh, from their knowledge base that are overrepresented in the list of genes that we obtained from our module of differentially expressed genes. So let's have a look at the result that we see on this page. Above the table we can see the input and analysis details and we can see that uh, 2,475 genes have been processed in this analysis. Also we can see that a 2 by 2 contingency table analysis, chi-square, with continuity correction has been used. Um, we see that if genes were higher expressed in the MIG-N amplified group, so the MIG-N yes group, then we can see that those genes have been colored red in this result, and uh, those genes that were higher expressed in the non-MIG-N amplified group, um, or with the same expression, we can see that those genes have been colored in green. Furthermore, we see the, the ID from gene ontology. We see the number of genes that were in that path. We see the number of genes that were available in our list that overlapped uh, with this gene set. And we can see the p-value of uh, this overlap being by chance. Furthermore, we see the biological uh, description that gene ontology provides. And uh, when there are not too many genes in that entry, we can see also which genes are involved and whether they belong to the genes that have been higher expressed with the MIG-N amplification 
or that were higher expressed or um, similar in the non mic and amplified group. From here you can have a look at the overlapping genes uh, by clicking on any of the, these gene sets. Uh, once you click on one of these gene sets, the, the ID, a new tab opens and you can see the heat map um, where the overlapping genes are on the rows and our samples are um, in the columns. You can see which genes are downregulated, which genes are upregulated for which samples and how uh, they cluster with each other. Similarly, you can see which groups um, you can find among the samples that cluster together based on their expression profiles within this gene set. Furthermore, you can just click away this tab again or go back to the original tab. You can scroll down to the bottom of the page to either download your gene ontology result or you can, for instance, do an other analysis, either with the levels in which you want to dig in the ontologies, a uh, different kind of process that you want to dig into. Or you can, for instance, just uh, look at the genes that are higher expressed in the MIC amplified group and redo your analysis. From here, you can just um, either close the tabs if you don't need the analysis any longer um, or directly Go back to the main page of the results of the differential expression between groups analysis. Similar to the gene ontology analysis, we look at an uh, overrepresentation analysis where we look for an enrichment in gene sets. Here we can search different collections. Um, we can choose one of these. Uh, for now, I will choose this one. Um, we can set a different uh, p-value cutoff if we want. We can choose whether we are looking only at over or under or all representations. Also, we can choose to only look at the groups of genes that are included in um, a higher expression in the one group or the other. For now, I leave it at default um, and we simply go to next. As you can see, here is a uh, result that has looked also at neuroblastoma. Um, we can see this as a kind of a positive control. If you click on the H in front of uh, any of these gene sets, then we get a heat map where the samples are ordered on the basis of their expression profiles over uh, these genes that were the overlap between these sets. You can see underneath here, if you click on a sort order listing, a list of the uh, genes that are part of this set and also a list of uh, the samples. Um, you can see a description of this gene set. And if you read the description, then you understand why by our unsupervised clustering, indeed uh, the MIG-N amplification samples cluster together in this corner uh, with a quite different expression profile in uh, this gene set uh, from the non-amplified samples. For now, I will just close this tab and we will uh, be back in the scavenger uh, page. Also this one I will close for now an option from here is uh, to display the genes in a heat map. In order to show you the full interactivity that's possible with the smaller sets, I'm just going to change the type of test that we did. Instead of a p-value, I will now ask for the top 100 results. And the rest I leave as is. And I say adjust cutoff. I still keep the same groups. And now I have only 100 combinations. With this, I can show you the heat map interactivity. So here we see a heat map. Uh, as you can see, um, the heat map is quite clear cut, uh, again, on the division of MIG and Amplified, indeed. And for the smaller gene sets, I can hover over uh, the rows to uh, see the gene more clearly, but also to just click on it to obtain the one gene view with the expression values for all the samples for that gene. Um, I can click away the tab again. Uh, for the bigger gene sets, that's not possible. Uh, if there are too many cells in the plot, you can't hover over it and you can't be interactive. Again, underneath here, you can um, find uh, the genes and the samples listed. And uh, you can choose to make different transformations. That's it for now um, that we will discuss about the buttons. Of course, there are more 
uh, analysis that you can perform. We highly recommend you to just play around. And if you have any questions, do email us. Thank you.